Hello everyone, happy evening, a very good evening. I hope and I believe all of you are doing well. A uh, quick note whether the audio visual is all good. Hello everyone, am I audible and visible? Right, so I have uh, shared the PDF uh, on the Telegram group, right? So if you want, you can uh, annotate the PDF as we discuss this topic, the blood supply. And if you want to rectify this topic, basically this is arterial supply of the brain. It's not about the venous circulation, not the dural venous sinuses. This is just about the arterial one, okay? And a reminder about the ongoing achievers batch. Uh, where we are focusing everything that can help the students uh, basically to crack the exam. So we have theory plus MCQs, then we have image based questions, we have PYQs. All of this will be running basically till the NEET PG exam. So everything will be covered in this batch. Okay. So starting with the blood supply of the brain. So what we need to know that basically for the brain, the two major arteries, we have the anterior circulation which is the carotid one and even in the carotid it is the internal carotid which supplies the brain not the external carotid in the posterior circulation basically it is the vertebro basilar system right the vertebral artery is joining to form basilar then the pca so anterior is ica and the posterior is the vertebro basilar system now ica basically is a branch of common carotid artery so common carotid artery forms ica and eca and from where does this common carotid artery comes, right? So look at few important points here. So we have the uh, common carotid artery, uh, which gives the one which is going to the brain. Okay, the one which is going to the brain will be the internal carotid artery. The one which is here supplying the face, vagera, giving the branches in the cervical part as well. That is the external carotid artery. So remember that in the neck part, if you don't see any branches, it is ICA. If you see a branch is present in the neck part from an artery, then it is the ECA. Okay. So look at this one. First, tell me what do you think is this uh, uh, investigation? I'll be integrating this uh, blood supply basically with radiology. Okay. So what do you think uh, is uh, happening here? This is not a DSA image. Right, this is not a DSA because DSA is basically when you go into the artery, most common femoral artery, catheterizing, then you go up and then you put the contrast, right? Here, you can see all the arteries together, right? And the bones are not white. This is MR angiogram because the bones are not white. You cannot see the white bones. What can we see here? Basically, this artery here, okay, this artery here is the arch of aorta. Okay, this is the arch of aorta. And we are seeing this three branches coming from the arch of aorta, right? So that is one, two and three branches. So tell me from right to left, if this is the arch of aorta, from right to left, this is the right side, this is the left side. What are the branches of the arch of aorta? SAP is for the SVC, aorta and the pulmonary trunk, okay, in the mediastinum. Here we are talking about the branches of the arch of aorta, right? And remember that is B, C, Yes, Bachelor of Computer Science, uh, that is brachiocephalic trunk, common carotid artery and the subclavian artery. Which common carotid artery? The left common carotid, the left subclavian, not the right common carotid and the right subclavian. Because the brachiocephalic trunk is what gives, what are the branches of this brachiocephalic trunk? So decode the terms wherever you can. When you say brachiocephalic trunk, so one artery is going to the arm, the upper limb that is subclavian. One branch is going to the brain wala that is the carotid. So brachiocephalic basically gives the subclavian artery and the common carotid artery, the right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery, right? 
सो दैट विल गिव द राइट कॉमन कैरोटेड आर्टरी एंड द राइट सबक्लेवियन आर्टरी ठीक है सो दैट इज अबाउट बी सी एस ओके दीज आर द ब्रांचेस ऑफ आर्च ऑफ एटा सो द राइट मोस्ट वन इज द बी देन द सी एंड देन द एस सो दिस इज ब्रेक यूसिफालिक ट्रंक दिस इज लेफ्ट कॉमन कैरोटेड दिस इज लेफ्ट सबक्लेवियन आर्टरी ठीक है Now let's have a look at this internal carotid artery. How do I identify in the image and about the common carotid artery? Tell me at what vertebral level the common carotid artery bifurcates into the ICA and the ECA. At uh, at what vertebral level? So common carotid artery divides at C4. Okay, basically it divides at the C4 level. Remember the major bifurcations are at four level. Carotid C4. trachea t4 aorta bifurcation l4 so c4 t4 l4 bifurcation what level is it where it is getting bifurcated so the thyroid cartilage ka basically the thyroid cartilage ka upper border is where the carotid bifurcates okay so this is the upper level basically of the thyroid cartilage even this has been asked in the exam previously theek hai so you can see the bifurcation here now how do i know which is ica which is eca if i can see the branches coming from the neck wala part then it is eca where there is no branch in the neck it is ica what are the parts of the ica we have the cervical part that is the neck part then it is going through the petrous bone right then we have the petrous part right is going to the petrous part and then this blue color this one the siphon okay in which part it is forming the s shape that is the cavernous part okay that is the cavernous part and above the cavernous part basically is the cerebral part okay if i have to divide into four major parts cervical petrous cavernous and cerebral okay so these are the four major parts basically of the uh, internal carotid artery so uh, look at this one uh, cervical part okay the first one that gives no branch very very important cervical part gives no branch then we have the petrous part right the petrous part then we have uh, basically the cavernous part which is like this complete s right the complete s and above that we have the cerebral part so what we should know here is what are the branches okay basically what are the branches here so in the petrous part you have pp artery of uh, pterygoid canal and the carotico tympanic artery from the cavernous part is where we have the inferolateral trunk and the meningeal branch okay the meningo hypophyseal trunk and the inferolateral trunk theek hai fir cerebral part mein very important we have ophthalmic artery important the terminal branches of ica what are the terminal branches of ica it gives the anterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery just before terminating what part does uh, what branch does it give remember it is the anterior choroidal artery very very important anterior choroidal artery remember ac is a branch of ic okay so that is the anterior choroidal artery is a branch of internal carotid artery we will see that anterior choroidal artery if there is a infarct in the territory of anterior choroidal artery right so tell me what uh, part will you see the infarct in which part will be affected the posterior limb of the internal capsule okay and basically the medial temporal lobe hippocampus wagera wahan pe dikhega very very important anterior choroidal artery is uh, posterior limb of internal capsule hippocampus wo wala part theek okay? hai so remember ac is a branch of ic and then then you also have the posterior communicating artery another important question which connects basically your anterior circulation with the posterior circulation the posterior communicating artery joins the ica with the pca so this is a branch of ica remember posterior communicating is a branch of uh, uh, ica theek okay? hai so basically a uh, hypophyseal artery is coming from which branch it is the cavernous part so if you remember the anatomy agar is cella tarsi ka hai pituitary wala to uske aaju baaju mein basically hota hai cavernous sinus so that is why the hypophyseal branches basically are coming from the they are coming from the cavernous part okay the hypophyseal branches are coming from the cavernous part theek okay? hai what is the first branch of the cerebral part first is basically the ophthalmic artery okay then it goes upper upper so sabse pehle aata hai ophthalmic artery ठीक है नाउ दिस इज अगेन बेसिकली द सेम आइडियली द आईसीए इज डिवाइडेड इनटू सेवन सेगमेंट्स राइट यू हैव द सर्वाइकल सेगमेंट 
then you have the petrous part the lacerum part and this part basically you will have the uh, that is basically the uh, cavernous part the s shape the siphon is basically the cavernous part then we have the clinoid and uh, then we have ophthalmic which is supraclinoid and the terminal one okay now this image this investigation basically is dsa how do we identify is by the okay by the black vessel black contrast anytime basically indicates dsa okay only in dsa the vessel will be black okay so uh, again uh, this one basically the tortuous part the s shape that is going to be the cavernous part it is giving the inferolateral trunk and the meningohypophyseal trunk okay so basically the cavernous part gives the inferolateral trunk and the meningohypophyseal trunk okay these are the branches coming from the cavernous part very very important so cavernous part gives inferolateral trunk and the meningohypophyseal trunk okay now uh, let's go to the next one so this is the same thing that you are seeing here the internal carotid artery angiogram how do i know this is internal carotid is by its tortuous course this part basically here we have the cavernous part okay and this is the inferolateral trunk and the meningohypophyseal trunk okay the branches from the cavernous part okay now let's have a look at the uh, cerebral wala part okay the cerebral part cavernous ke upar this is the cavernous sinus cella se related then we have the cerebral the first branch going to the eye the anterior one that is the ophthalmic artery okay that is the ophthalmic artery uh, ica terminates basically into aca and the mca very important how do i identify that this is the anterior cerebral artery it it goes around the corpus callosum if this is the corpus callosum anterior cerebral artery basically forms the pericallosal arteries right the pericallosal branch so this is the aca this one is going to be mca okay and this one which is going behind joining the posterior circulation would be the posterior communicating artery okay it's the posterior communicating artery okay so important ones now have a look at this image okay now have a look at this image so this is again ica ka angiogram the dsa image the s part is getting over and then you can see basically the anterior branch which is coming the branch which is going anteriorly a will be ophthalmic artery okay a would be ophthalmic artery uh, this artery right this artery basically which will go around the corpus callosum that would be the uh, that would be the aca okay that would basically be the aca okay now let's have a look a quick look on the vertebral artery the posterior circulation vertebral artery joining to form the basilar okay so two vertebral arteries aati hai they join to form the basilar artery vertebral artery is a branch of which artery vertebral artery is a branch of which artery you can see from the image here that vertebral artery basically is coming from this subclavian artery okay it's coming from the subclavian artery which part of subclavian artery the first part of subclavian artery okay the first part of subclavian artery remember vitamin c d is the mnemonic for subclavian vertebral is a is a branch from the first part okay now this vertebral artery it goes through the cervical vertebra transverse foramina which transverse foramina from c6 remember it does not go through the c7 transverse foramina okay so it goes the basically through the transverse foramina and then it is arching like this so atlas ke yahan se jata hai so the question asked in the previous inict exam atlas ke kaun se part se related hota hai uh, the vertebral artery it is related to the posterior arch we discussed in one of the recent kbmds also right so the posterior arch basically if this is the atlas the posterior arch has the relation with the vertebral artery okay a groove for the vertebral artery then it enters the skull via foramen magnum right the largest foramen foramen magnum se fir wo upar jata hai joins the other vertebral artery to form the basilar artery okay so that is about the vertebral artery now uh, look at this one what is this image showing which angiogram is this one all of us can see we can identify now that this is which angiogram this is the ica why because i see the tortuous course 
and I see the arteries coming like this. This is ICA. Similarly, this is the coronal part, like the frontal view of the uh, ICA ka angiogram. And look at the terminal branches, important to identify. It gives this one artery and it gives the second artery. So the one artery which is going medially, that is the anterior cerebral artery. The artery which is going laterally is the middle cerebral artery. Okay, that is the middle cerebral artery. Okay, so basically you have the ACA, right, going around the corpus callosum and you have the MCA which goes behind. So ACA and MCA, this is only one side ICA that we are seeing in the DSA. This image we have seen, vertebral artery we have seen, right, basically the vertebral artery you can see going through the uh, transverse foramina, C6 to C1 ke se jayega, okay, and uh, then tell me that this is very very important question related to the triangles of neck. Third part of vertebral artery is a content of which triangle in the neck? It is the suboccipital triangle, right, occiput bone hai? Uske niche atlas hai, to ho gaya sub occipital. So remember it is sub occipital triangle. Which part of the vertebral artery? It is the third part, right? It is the third part. Fourth part is under one. Okay, when it will go inside, then it will be the fourth part. Okay, so remember that it is the third part which is a component of the uh, which is a component of the sub occipital triangle. Okay. Okay, now uh, ha, internal capsule ka quickly I will tell you about the points. So this is basically where we have the sub occipital triangle and you can see the vertebral artery here. Okay, it is a vertebral artery here. You have the sub occipital nerve. So remember it is a third part is what is the component of the sub occipital triangle. Now coming to the circle of Willis. Okay, coming to the circle of Willis. What forms the circle of Willis? Look at this one. This is the circle of Willis. Before coming to circle of Willis, uh, let us uh, talk about uh, the branches of the posterior circulation. Internal carotid to they clear? Now vertebral artery, the two join together to form the basilar artery. Basilar artery goes where? In front of the pons. Remember the relation. So if this is the midbrain, we have the pons, we have the medulla. So basilar artery goes in front of the pons. Okay. What are the terminal branches of the basilar artery? It is posterior circulation. So remember it is posterior cerebral artery. Okay. It is posterior cerebral artery. Then just below the posterior cerebral artery, the second one. Okay. The second last one branch is, second is superior cerebellar artery okay so imagine that if this is the cerebellum so in the cerebellum we have the superior cerebellar artery okay and we have the inferior cerebellar artery even in the inferior cerebellar artery we have the anterior inferior and the posterior inferior so anterior inferior is this one coming from the basilar artery Okay, this is the anterior inferior which is coming from the basilar artery. Pica, this one which is coming from vertebral. We have seen in the recent KBMD again, the cadaveric image wala. Pica is coming from the vertebral artery. So remember that basilar artery gives which, uh, uh, which cerebellar arteries? Basilar artery gives Ica and ska okay it does not give pica so it gives superior cerebellar artery the anterior inferior cerebellar artery but not the posterior inferior cerebellar artery and the rest of this you can see are the pontine branches because basically it goes in front of the pons okay so that is what it is the terminal branch pca then you have basically the sca what nerve goes here in between the pca and the sca it is the third cranial nerve. Okay, it is the third cranial nerve. So an aneurysm of superior cerebellar, posterior cerebral, even this artery that is the PCOM can cause third nerve palsy. Right, the aneurysm will compress on the third nerve. So that can cause oculomotor that is third nerve palsy. And this is the posterior communicating, joining the ICA with the PCA. Okay, it's a branch of ICA coming from ICA and going towards the PCA. What is this branch from the internal carotid just before the bifurcation? You can also see that here it is anterior choroidal artery. AC is a branch of IC. ICA is giving the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery joined by the anterior communicating. So look at the circle of Willis. What is forming the circle of Willis? Anterior communicating, 
anterior cerebral, internal carotid, posterior communicating. You have the posterior cerebral. Basically, these are forming the circle of villus. Remember that middle cerebral artery does not form a part of circle of villus. Middle cerebral artery does not form a part of circle of villus. Very, very important. It's going out of the circle of villus. Okay, basically it is going out of the circle of villus. Okay, so basically you can see the branches from ICA. You have the ophthalmic artery and you have the anterior choroidal artery also. Okay, the ophthalmic and the anterior choroidal. So, uh, which artery is the most common site of the berry aneurysm? Berry aneurysms are common here in the ACOM. Okay, ACOM is the one berry aneurysm. Previously asked question ki yaha pe hoga optic chiasma. So, optic chiasma compression ho hai ACOM aneurysm. Okay, ACOM aneurysm kar sakta hai. Okay. Now, uh, let's have a look at this cadaveric image as well and try to identify the vessels. So, these one posteriorly, these are the two vertebral arteries joining to form the basilar artery. Terminal branch of basilar artery is the PCA. Second but last one is the superior cerebellar artery and these are the pontine branches basically that we are seeing. Okay? This artery, what is this artery going to be coming from the basilar? The anterior inferior cerebellar artery. Okay, that will be the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. This from the vertebral will be the posterior inferior cerebellar artery. Now, this is the PCOM joining the ICA uh, with the posterior cerebral artery. This is the uh, anterior cerebral. This is going to be the middle cerebral. The larger one here, basically this is ICA. Okay, that is what is the circulation basically. Now, look at the another image here basically. And now if I ask you, identify the uh, vessel which is given in pink color here. What is this vessel which is given in pink color here? Right, what is this one? What is this vessel given in the pink, the large one? This is the internal carotid artery. This branch going from the internal carotid, this will be the middle cerebral artery. You can see it is going lateral. So, remember that the lateral surface of the brain, right? The lateral surface, the superolateral surface basically will be the MCA. ACA is going in the interhemispheric fissure, beach may in the interhemispheric fissure. It supplies the medial part, okay? It supplies the medial part of the brain. This is the sylvian fissure or basically the lateral system that we see here. So, you have the PCA, you have the scar, the pontine arteries, the ICA and you have the pica. Can someone identify this artery here? If I uh, zoom this image, give me a minute. What do you think? Which artery is this one? Which artery is this? Very good. That is the anterior spinal artery. Okay, that is basically the anterior spinal artery which is coming from the medial aspect of the vertebral artery. Okay, that's the anterior spinal artery. And you can see the cranial nerves also here. Right, you can see that in between the PCA and the scar, there is a cranial nerve which is the oculomotor nerve. Okay, that's the oculomotor nerve basically there. Okay. Now, again, this is MR angiogram that we see here. Let us quickly identify the vessels. So, this vessel here, the two vessels joining to form one vessel, this is vertebral artery, this is basilar artery. This tortuous artery supplying the brain, this will be the internal carotid artery, giving the middle cerebral artery and the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, that is how basically the circulation is here. This artery coming from the vertebral will be the pica. Okay, that will be the pica. Terminal from the basilar will be the posterior cerebral artery. Okay. Uh, so, that was about this one. Now, let me ask you this question. Imagine that you have got this image in the exam and you have been asked, identify the vessel labeled 1. What do you think is the vessel labeled 1? <clears throat> what do you think is this vessel labeled number 1?
Ah, uh, vessel label number one is which of the following? Yes, Akila, uh, correct. Uh, I see uh, only Akila getting this right, and just one also correct. Uh, uh, it is uh, it is uh, basically the it is basically this one is the basilar artery. Why basilar artery? Because look at the image. This is MR angiogram, so you can see everything. The anterior one is the internal carotid artery, the tortuous one. This one is going to be the vertebral artery which is joining to form the basilar artery. It's a single artery. You can see that it's giving an artery going behind. This is the posterior cerebral artery. This one is going to be anterior cerebral. This one is going to be the middle cerebral. So anterior, middle, posterior cerebral, right? So this one is the basilar because actually that is the one going in front of the pons. You need to imagine that, okay? So this vertebral artery, ye wali hai, jo do hai, uske fusion ke baad, this is going to be the basilar giving the posterior cerebral artery. Internal carotid artery will not be a straight artery like this. It has a tortuous course like this as you are seeing, okay? Okay. Now looking at the uh, various arteries supply what areas of the brain. Most important remember that the lateral surface, the predominantly the lateral surface is the middle cerebral artery. Occipital lobe basically is the PCA. Piche wala occipital lobe is the PCA. You can see that the frontal lobe predominantly will be the ACA. Okay. So that is why uh, and you can also see that the medial surface, okay, the medial surface blue color ACA. ACA and PCA predominantly supply the medial surface of the brain. Middle cerebral artery hardly has any contribution. Okay, middle cerebral artery hardly has any contribution. So, now what are the features in ACA in fact? We will see all of that. Important to remember ki lateral wala surface MCA predominantly, beach wala surface is the ACA and the PCA predominantly. Okay. Now, uh, let's have a look at uh, this one. Okay, and this is what we were talking about the anterior cerebral artery. Look at how the anterior cerebral artery goes around the corpus callosum. That is how you will identify the anterior cerebral artery. Okay, that is how you would identify the anterior cerebral artery. Uh, very, very important. Okay, it goes around the corpus callosum. And uh, let's have a look at uh, this one. So again, uh, this is the ICA that we can see the tortuous one and look at the anterior cerebral artery which will go around the corpus callosum. This is the frontal view. You can see the anterior cerebral artery. It will go in the interhemispheric feature. Okay, interhemispheric fissure. Next one. Now tell me what do you see in this image? So basically this is MRI showing restricted diffusion in the frontal area, right? Ye lateral ventricles hai, uske aage frontal area mein hai. So basically this is ACA territory in fact. This one, you see the hypo density in the CT on both sides, medial surface. This is bilateral ACA in fact. So look at the ACA territory basically, medially predominant ACA and one third is PCA. Lateral surface is all MCA, okay? So basically, if uh, this is the brain, the medial one is the ACA and the PCA, the lateral one is the MCA. Okay, the lateral one is the MCA. So what are the features, the clinical features in ACA territory in fact? Because you have the leg area here, right? So the lower limb weakness will be more than the upper limb weakness. And it's also the paracentral lobule wala area, bladder wala area. It can lead to urinary incontinence okay urinary incontinence lower limb weakness more than upper limb uh, frontal also controls the personality right so disinhibition personality problems all these will be features of aca territory in fact okay now let's look i have a look at this mca okay this is the mca coming from the ica what do you see in this mr angiogram anyone what do you see in this mr angiogram so basically, this is the ACA and this is the MCA. So what do we not see is this side MCA is not seen. It is blocked, right? So the MCA is blocked. So there will be MCA infarct. Okay, there will be MCA infarct. Like you see here, look at the left MCA infarct. The lateral territory is what is affected. The basal ganglia region also will be affected, 
right it's the lateral territory which is affected you can see that wet shaped limited by uh, the vascular territory and look at how the medial surface of the brain is spared right because it is supplied by the aca and the pca okay you have a branch or uh, branches from the mca the lenticulostriate branches which supply the basal ganglia okay the basal ganglia will be affected the features will be left mca is gone opposite side hemiplegia so there would be right sided hemiplegia there can be broca's aphasia wernicke's aphasia because these areas are supplied by mca there can be facial palsy right so hemiplegia with aphasia jab hoga think of mca infarct okay think of mca infarct this one what are you seeing in this one the restricted diffusion in the occipital lobe posteriorly and what is this area basically this is corpus callosum the posterior part of the corpus callosum which is called the splenium right the splenium is affected the occipital lobe is affected so this is pca infarct what does the patient present with visual complaints okay the patient presents with a uh, visual complaints cortical blindness because occipital lobe controls the vision ठीक है, so you can also see that thalamus also can be affected. You have the splenium, you have the occipital lobe which is affected. Coming to what are the perforating arteries in the circle of Willis? So basically, in the perforating arteries, you have the medial perforators which includes the ubernus artery. From where does the ubernus artery comes? This one is the MRI. Okay, the DWI diffusion weighted imaging uh, of MRI DWI sequence. Uh, all right so this one uh, you have the medial perforators which basically come from the anterior cerebral artery right so basically uh, this is the anterior cerebral artery the perforators the small arteries which is coming from aca that is called medial perforators the one which are coming from the lateral branch that is the mca those are called the lateral perforators and you have some also coming from the pca and the pcom right the perforating ones are going in the center these are the small small branches so thalamo perforators thalamo geniculate basically they come from the posterior circulation okay so uh, look at this one okay look at this one very important one that we had discussed the anterior choroidal artery ac is a branch of ic it supplies the posterior limb of internal capsule right so you can see that this is the posterior limb of internal capsule which is affected so you will see the restricted diffusion in that part if the thalamus is showing the infarct it is basically the thalamica branches they come from the pca so remember that thalamus will be affected in pca infarct thalamus would be pca anterior choroidal will be posterior limb of internal capsule the lenticulostriate arteries whether it is medial or it is lateral which are blocked how will we know that if the medial basal ganglia is gone like the caudate is gone and it is the anterior limb of internal capsule then we will think of medial medial branches come from aca okay if you have the lateral one that is the lentiform nucleus is gone lateral may the lentiform goes then it is a lateral lenticulostriate branches coming from the mca okay coming from the mca right so look at this one basically if i uh, sorry if i zoom in this image so what do we see in this image basically cavernous sinus this is what we were talking about ki jo cella hota hai uske aaju baaju cavernous sinus hota hai and you can see that internal carotid is the content of the cavernous sinus it goes through and through the cavernous sinus along with the abducens nerve okay so cavernous segment ho gaya फिर उसके बाद यू विल हैव द एंटीरियर सेरेब्रल आर्टरी एंड द मिडिल सेरेब्रल आर्टरी राइट द मिडिल सेरेब्रल आर्टरी गोइंग इन द सिल्वियन फिशर सो लुक एट द ब्रांचेस कमिंग द मीडियल लेंटिकुलर स्ट्राइड ब्रांचेस इज फ्रॉम एंटीरियर सेरेब्रल द लैटरल लेंटिकुलर स्ट्राइड इज फ्रॉम द मिडिल सेरेब्रल ठीक है द मीडियल वन बेसिकली दे विल सप्लाई द कॉर्डेट एंड द एंटीरियर लिम ओके द कॉर्डेट एंड द एंटीरियर लिम ठीक है क्लियर विथ एवरी वन बेसिकली right so the lenticular striatal uh, territory in fact as the term says it is lenticulo that is the lentiform nucleus and the striatum that is the basal ganglia involved so you see that this is the caudate adjacent to frontal horn right uh, this is the lentiform nucleus gone 
So when you have the basal ganglia gone, think of the lenticulostriate territory in far. If isolated, it is affected. Okay? This is the lentiform which is gone, right? So this is lenticulostriate territory in part, which will involve the basal ganglia. Okay, now look at this one. Uh, what do you think is this artery? Which artery will be involved in this case? Which artery do you think will be involved in this case? Where do you see the hypodensity in the CT? Where do you see the hypodensity? This is the uh, lateral, uh, basically the lateral ventricle frontal horns. So, uske aju baju mein you have the chordate, right? The chordate nucleus is affected. The anterior limb of internal capsule is affected. So, if the chordate and the anterior limb of internal capsule is affected, it is basically a branch from ACA, the largest one. The recurrent artery of Eubner. Okay, remember the recurrent artery of Eubner. So what do you see here? This is the ACA, the anterior cerebral artery. It is giving this recurrent artery of Eubner. Remember that Eubner is a branch from ACA. Okay, that is the medial lenticulostriate. From the MCA comes the uh, lateral lenticulostriate. Okay, the recurrent artery of Eubner will be anterior limb of internal capsule. ACA, Eubner, anterior limb. AC, anterior choroidal coming from the ICA will be the posterior limb. Okay. And what are we seeing in this case? Again, the DSA image. What is the DSA image showing? Uh, in the DSA image, basically you have the two vertebral arteries joining to form the basilar and it is giving the PCA and it's giving the PCA, right? The vertebral joining to form the basilar giving the PCA, the SCA, the ICA and the PICA that we have already discussed, okay? Now, how do I know that this is pica in fact? It is a cerebellar artery. So, cerebellum is affected, right? When I see at this coronal image, I see that the inferior cerebellum is affected. Axial image tells me it is posterior cerebellum. So, this is basically posterior inferior cerebellar artery in fact. That is pica in fact. Okay, that is pica in fact. Okay. And in the brainstem perforators, okay, the small branches, Lateral medullary syndrome, we know pica or vertebral artery. Medial is the anterior spinal artery coming from the vertebral. Okay, so uh, these are basically brainstem perforators would be the posterior circulation. What are you seeing in this case? Uh, Shivani, the posterior limb basically is anterior choroidal artery. So when you talk about the anterior choroidal artery in fact, you will have the posterior limb of internal capsule affected. Choroid is the choroid plexus basically of the lateral ventricle. Uh, temporal horn may supply karta hai. And adjacent to the temporal horn, the part of the temporal lobe will also be affected. So, posterior limb along with the temporal lobe, amygdala, hippocampus, that would be anterior choroidal artery. Yes, uh, Bouchard's is basically hypertension wala hemorrhages, the lateral perforators from the MCA that are commonly involved. Now, what is the perture on infarct? Like INICT wale mein important ho sakta hai question. What is the artery of perture on infarct? What is perture on infarct basically? And what is the artery of perture on? See, this is the basilar artery. This is the posterior cerebral artery. You can see a branch coming from the posterior cerebral artery, this one. Right, one branch coming from each PCA. That is going to supply the thalamus. Right, these are the thalamic wale branches. Here, what we see is, that both of the thalamic branches are coming from one PCA itself. So, if with the one PCA, your both the thalamus are getting affected, basically that will be artery of percheron. So, in artery of percheron, basically where will we see the infarct? In bilateral thalami. Okay, bilateral thalami, both the thalami are supplied by one PCA itself. Both are coming from one side. So, it will basically be bilateral thalamic and mesencephalic, that is midbrain infarct. Clinical presentation is, patient will be uh, altered mental status along with hemiplegia or hemisensory loss. Because thalamus is going, so sensation is or midbrain is going, so hemiplegia is also going, and the patient is agitated. Okay? So, look at this one. What are you seeing in this one? This is the thalamus. Okay, this is the thalamus. Bilateral thalami affected, 
when bilateral thalami are affected think of artery of percheron in fact artery of percheron you can see in this mr angiogram basilar artery giving this posterior cerebral artery and you can see that from one posterior cerebral artery both the arteries are arising right so that is the artery of percheron from one posterior cerebral artery both the thalamic arteries are arising from one pca only okay so artery of percheron bilateral thalami and midbrain infarct is what we would see okay so this was a quick review basically about the uh, about the blood supply of the brain a quick overview basically and to give you the important clinical scenarios uh, that how the various strokes would present which artery will have what manifestations uh, right i hope this is clear aca in fact mein kya hoga mca mein kya hoga pca mein kya hoga recurrent artery of humeral anterior limb anterior choroidal artery posterior limb hippocampus will be gone artery of percheron bilateral thalami in fact so basically these are the key words to identify that which artery is blocked when it's vertebro basilar circulation the cerebellum is affected cerebellum affected so there would be ataxia imbalance right a giddiness that all would be the history in the posterior circulation in fact theek hai kyunki wahan pe aapka basically uh, one important point to be remembered remember that labyrinthine artery labyrinthine artery is most commonly arising from labyrinthine artery is the branch of anterior inferior cerebellar artery okay labyrinthine artery basically is the branch of ica so that is why when the posterior circulation is gone labyrinth also gone so that leads to that giddiness and all okay so remember that ica basically gives a labyrinthine artery okay so yes uh, that was about the uh today's uh, okay that was about the today's session of the blood supply of brain the arterial supply i hope this is clear now so we have integrated with radiology right a very very important topic so thank you so much everyone for joining in and goodbye take care and keep studying keep revising and